I made a video called the top reasons why people move to Tampa Bay, Florida. And we got through about 10 of the 30 reasons that we have fallen in love with in the area. So what we decided to do is turn this into a three part mini series. That way we can keep these videos in bite sized chunks. And today we're going into section two. Today we're gonna start getting into those unseen things, the things that you don't normally hear people talk about. These are the things that once we got here, we may not even recognize were available to us and really have improved the quality of our life. It is a big decision to move your family. Maybe it's just you and a significant other, or maybe it's just yourself. We're happy to help people guide you through it. And as a matter of fact, I'm also a licensed real estate agent. And over the past few years, we've been able to serve over a hundred families and help them relocate to the area. So if you have questions about it, don't hesitate to reach out. There's a comment section down below, ask questions in there. That's how we build a lot of these videos. All of my contact information is listed down below. Heck, there's even a link to my calendar so you could schedule the time that is most convenient for you. Now let's get into this list. So the first thing I want to share with you, and again, this is the benefit that we weren't aware we were going to receive, is we have a vibrant art scene here in the Tampa Bay area, and it's something I have come to absolutely love. When I lived up in Detroit, we had the Detroit Institute of Arts, and it is a beautiful museum, and I really enjoyed going there as a kid, and it was a wonderful experience. But when I got to Tampa, man, I was not prepared just for how deep the culture ran when it came to art here. You know, you've got the Dow Museum. In St. Pete, you've got the Tampa Museum of Art. And those are just a couple of the most notables, if you will. What you can't see is when you get into these great neighborhoods and you really start to dig in, there is so much street art. There is murals all over St. Pete. There are murals in downtown Tampa, which I absolutely love. You go into communities like Gulfport, which are just known as artistic friendly. I mean, people take their houses and they turn them into pieces of art. There's the bowling ball house up in Safety Harbor. There's just so many different areas that are rich and diverse in art and culture. There's a gentleman that's called the Vitali Brothers and they do some of the best art. They just did the City Connect mural in St. Pete. When you get here, let me just tell you right now, it is an unseen benefit, but it is awesome to be surrounded by such incredible artists and artwork. Number two on our list is near and dear to my heart because I am a foodie and the outstanding food scene here in the Tampa Bay area does not disappoint. Now, listen, I know that there are people who are very well cultured. We're just going to use that term, cultured. And they've traveled the world and they get to experience a lot of different cuisines. And I'm not here to say that Tampa has better cuisine than Italy or France or anything like that. So let me just start there. Now, for the rest of us who really enjoy a diverse food scene, anything from fine dining all the way down to the traditional tourist beach food, which I would consider myself, you know, that person, we love a great meal. We love to go to places like Steelbach, which is a wonderful steakhouse down in Armature Works. Another incredible place in Tampa, if you've never been there before, is the brisket shop. I think Danny Hernandez does some of the best brisket in the entire country. I know that's saying a lot, but I've traveled, y'all. I really have enjoyed a lot of good food. And that is some of the best barbecue I've had in the entire country, which is awesome. You can go to Engine 9 in St. Pete and have some of the best hamburgers you've ever had. And they're really unique. You know, they'll put brisket or, you know, an entire chicken sandwich on top of a burger. They have some of the best wings I've ever had in the country. So you have a lot of different options here, right? Incredible seafood. You know, you've got amazing fine dining options too. I mean, Burns Steakhouse, who doesn't know about that? I mean, people from all over the country know about Burns. So like, if you want to know where to go eat when you come in town, please, please, please leave a comment down below. I'm happy to answer that, but shoot me a DM on Instagram too. I will give you my hit list because I keep a list of places that I've been and how I rate them. And I'm happy to share them with you because we love food. Number three, Tampa is a sports enthusiast paradise. I mean, we've got the Super Bowl winning Tampa Bay Buccaneers. We've got the Stanley Cup winning Tampa Bay Lightning, Tampa Bay Rays. And if you're into soccer, we even have the Rowdy. So you have that as an option as well. And don't stop. You've got pickleball, tennis, tennis, golf, all the normal stuff you'd have access to. You know, if you've got kids, there are world-class soccer programs here for youth. You have access to incredible dance and gymnastics. And one of the funnest things I think about this city is because so many people live here that have moved here from another area that, you know, when you go to a home game for the Rays, and let's just say they're playing the Red Sox, there'll be a huge Boston contingent there as well. 
and it is a unique sports environment, right? Because usually in most areas in the United States, like the home team is the dominant team in the stadium. And when you go to a Rays game, you can find Yankees fans there, Tigers fans there, Oriole fans. This is a great, great sports town. And if you're into sports, it's going to be a huge win for you. Number four is we have a really strong health system here. We've got Baycare, which is an excellent health system. You've got HCA, another really good health system. You've got Advent Healthcare, great. Orlando Healthcare is even moving into the area. When you make it to St. Petersburg, you got St. Anthony downtown. You've got the John Hopkins Medical Center, which is all children's downtown as well. You've got the VA in St. Petersburg. That facility is beautiful. As a matter of fact, it's that in San Diego, which are ranked number one. They like go back and forth between which is the best VA hospital. That's awesome. There's also a VA hospital up in Tampa. You got Tampa General Hospital. We've also got the Moffitt Healthcare System, which is growing like crazy. As a matter of fact, they're about to put a 700 acre plus research facility up in Angeline, which is in the north suburbs of Tampa. And Moffitt is really one of those cancer centers that people travel from all over the country to get care from, and they do an excellent job. So we're really blessed when it comes to health care. We have people in our lives who have been affected by things like cancer and other things that they've really needed help with. And Tampa has served them extremely well and they get wonderful care. More than a few of them have been cured and that is wonderful. And I'm so happy to be part of the community that has that accessibility to great health coverage. The next one on this list is honestly one of my absolute favorite things about living here in Tampa Bay. And that is our laid back lifestyle. I often say this is a flip flop and t-shirt lifestyle and honestly, that's the way we have felt since the day we've moved here. It can be slow at times. It can be busy if you want it to be. It can get phonetic and crazy. I mean, there's 3.2 million people in the metropolitan area. That's a lot of people. If you have to drive through the heart of rush hour, through the malfunction junction, we call it, that's going to be chaotic. There's no doubt about it. But what you will find is there is a slower pace of life here. And I love it. Let's get the work done, but let's make sure that we're not being crazy about it. This is in New York. It's it's not Miami. It's not Chicago. You know, it's not LA. People come here to, you know, really take advantage of the lifestyle. And if that's something that you're interested in or fueled by, then it's going to be a big win for you. Another thing that you have here in Tampa, and this could be a pro or a con, depending on how you look at it. You know, there are Panthers in Florida. Now I have never seen one, but I do know that they're in the state. Hence the Florida Panthers. That's where that name came from. Obviously we've got alligators. There's unique types of snakes. And here's the thing that I want to share with you. I have never seen an alligator walk through my neighborhood in five and a half, almost six years now. Never have ever seen it. Never even heard a neighbor talk about it. Could it happen? Sure. But we see alligators and the pest where you expect to see them. I walked outside with my wife and we look over and it looked like a dog. And I was like, that is a coyote. It was a very interesting experience. Now, when you go to the beach, you can see beautiful wildlife from pelicans to different types of osprey. And like, there's so many different birds here. Like there's parrots parakeets in the trees. Never seen an iguana. I know you can find those when you get further south. And when we go to the coast, you know, we, we just had the turtles hatch. That is an incredible experience. If you've never seen baby turtles, you know, hatch and then go to the ocean, it, it's mind blowing. It is such a cool experience. We've seen manatee out there. We have seen shark from a distance, not real close, thank goodness. Stingrays, that is such a cool experience to go out and see the school of rays out there. It's just a really unique environment. One of my favorite things is when we get off the airport in Tampa and come over over the Howard Franklin Bridge and you can see the pelicans out there and they're dive bombing for food. It's just one of the coolest things and it reminds me of being home and I absolutely love it. If you're getting any value out of today's video, please hit that like button and also don't forget to subscribe. That way you can be notified when part three of our top reasons people move to Tampa, Florida series comes out. Number seven on my list is there's a strong sense of community here. If you read the comments, you would think that every Floridian hates anyone who is an outsider. If you go look at any YouTube channel like this, every single native person, it, it might seem, doesn't like any outsiders. And in all fairness, as a human being, I don't necessarily love change. I know most people don't either. And I'm sharing this because people often have a concern of like, if we come, how do we make friends? When we moved here for the first time, we took possession of our home, I think on December 9th of 2018. And when I pulled down the street here, everybody came to the door and greeted us. And I gotta tell you right now, it was one of the most welcoming experiences I ever had in my entire life. And then that continued 
with us when we went to the beach and when we would meet people, when we went to the parks and we would meet people. And one of the very first questions that people would ask us are, where are you from? You only ask that if either this is normal or you're not from here. What I come to find out was a lot of people that we were meeting were going through the same experience or had gone through the same experience that we have. Okay, another one on our list here is the schools. Now, just this year, Florida was ranked the best state in the country for public schools or number two or something. And I remember seeing that and I go, wait a minute, everybody has told me that the Florida schools were terrible. Now, since I moved here, I have not experienced that. And I wanna give you a caveat though here. The first thing I want you guys to know is we homeschool our kids. So take what I'm about to say with a grain of salt. And I went to school to be an educator, by the way, but we decided to homeschool before we ever moved to Florida. That was a decision we'd made as a family and we are rocking with it. There are also great charter schools as options that are available to you. Florida is school of choice. There is a lot of good things about that here as well. And then there are some incredible private schools. Now, does everybody have the benefit and can they afford to pay a $15,000, $30,000, even as high as a $60,000 annual education bill for one child? No, most people in the country cannot, but those things are available to you if they're important to you. What we found in our experience is a lot of the elementary schools rate really high, and then all of a sudden the middle school doesn't rate good, and then the high schools are, are not great. But there are those, uh, again, specific communities where the high schools rate incredible. So, you know, East Lake's a great example of that. Steinbrenner High School, there's a bunch, I can name them all, but there's a great resource that I'd like to point you to. It's called greatschools.org. There's another one called School Review. Both of those websites are extremely helpful. Not only do they rank them, but the community members are able to leave reviews. Another thing that I recommend people do is get in the Facebook groups in those communities and ask the parents. Have you had kids go through the education system? Did they go into secondary school? Did they go into college? How did they do in their test scores? Those are the questions that I would ask rather than, is this a good school? Because people are going to have all kinds of opinions. Listen, y'all, sometimes when people leave a review, that person may not be giving the best insight. So just be mindful, due diligence here. Another thing I love about Tampa is our airport, which has been recognized as one of the best airports in the United States. And let me just tell you all, this place is awesome. You can get in and out super easy. I live approximately 45 minutes away. I live near Indian Rocks Beach and I have made it to the airport in 28 minutes before. However, that was a unicorn run. I hit no lights. It was like 6.30 in the morning. I dropped Kate off. We were blown away how quickly we made there. Now here's what's cool. Whether you go to the red or the blue side, the building is, is is nothing more than a rectangle. And when you walk in, doesn't matter what side you walk on, it'll say like Spirit and Delta on one side and Southwest and American on the other, but you can go in either side, it doesn't matter. Both of them go to the exact same place. What happens is it's like a hub and spoke. So you go up, you jump on a tram and there's no security before that. You just have to use your boarding pass. Typically the people that are going to your terminal at that time also happen to be on your flight. So the traffic is very light and typically I will leave 50 minutes minutes ahead of time, park my car, get a Starbucks, and still have time to sit down and answer emails before boarding that flight. It is such a good experience. Another reason people love living here, we decided to live here, is there is no state income tax. If you're moving from a state that does have a high income tax and you are a high income earner and you're able to bring your employment here, maybe you work a remote job or you own a business, this is a game changer. And it was a huge part of the consideration for us. We were looking for ways to limit our tax liability. You know, I'm self-employed. You know, we pay the highest taxes in the entire country and that's not a place where you want to be. So any tax savings you can receive is awesome. And this also goes for a W-2. You know, Florida has attracted more $200,000 income earners than any other state. Think about it, y'all. If you move from a state like California or New York where your state income tax was over 10% and you were making two, three, four, five hundred thousand $500,000 a year, you could literally be talking between $20,000 and $50,000 in savings annually. People will say there are other ways the state makes money off of us. And listen, they got to make money to, to pay the bills. Keep that in mind. Do your diligence. You know, there's a great cost of living calculator. I pointed this before. It's called the Forbes cost of living calculator. And what that'll do is really help you understand how far your salary will go where you live now versus moving to any city here in the state of Florida or anywhere else in the country. It's a great resource. I would check that out for sure. Well, I hope you've enjoyed part two of our series. I'm looking forward to delivering part three. Like I said before, make sure you subscribe. That way you don't miss it. And if you have any questions or comments, please feel free to put those in the comment section down below. 
I answer every one of those comments directly. I do not hand it off to an assistant. And if you have more questions or you're considering moving to the area, don't hesitate to reach out to me and the team. All of my contact information is down there, including a link to my calendar where you can schedule a time that is most convenient for you. Make sure you check out video number one if you haven't already. And as always, go out and live that Tampa life.